Ah, my apologies. I'm just doing a quick check and swap on this control unit. I... I need to go home. Five minutes and you'll be home. I promise. Uh, I'll wait then. Thank you for understanding. Let me make you more comfortable. Please, sit. I didn't know there's someone stationed up there. Yeah, well, people don't tend to pay attention when they're in transit. Most of them don't even look up. Look up? What are you... Whoa. Yeah, that. What the hell is that? It's the Hephaestus. Seriously? You don't know the biggest spaceship humanity ever built? You know, the one that will propel us to become an interstellar civilization? I've been so busy lately that I don't even read the news anymore. For the past five years? Er, I guess you're that busy, huh? I better get back to this. There. It's ready. Ah, uh, uh, alright. So, where are you heading, Mr... You can call me Henry. Okay, Henry. You can call me Hokulani, or Lani for short. So, where are you heading home to? What? I thought this pad can only go to one place. It does? I'm just making conversation, Henry. Oh, it's, um, Moir. Malaysia, huh? It's 9 a.m. there, right? Your family must be just waking up. Yeah. Something wrong? No, nothing is wrong, but, um, can I wait here for a minute? Sure. There's no rule against loitering. Thanks. Thank you. It's no problem. It's not what it looks like, you know. I'm not avoiding going home, I'm just... Actually, I don't know what I'm doing right now. It seems to me that you're taking a brief break from life. We can't take a break from life. That's not how reality works. My father. Years ago, this was before the ubiquity of the transport system, so people had to travel to work via cars or trains. Can you imagine that? Being trapped in a single place, unable to hop across the planet for work or for a quick lunch? Anyway, my father was working on the other side of the city then. It took him over an hour to get home every night. Even as a child, I knew how tiring that was. Yet, every night, he would come home with a smile. Every time I asked him to play, he would always say yes. Board games, VR, or even just mobile games. Those nights are my fondest memories. Sounds like a good father. He is. There was this one night when he got home half an hour earlier than usual. He parked the car in front of the garage, but he didn't get out immediately. He just sat inside the car for five minutes. I remember thinking how tired his face was, a blink away from falling asleep. But when he left the car, he did so with a wide smile. Back then, I couldn't figure out why he did that. Now, I think he's taking a break. I think it's what people did then when they were in transit. <laughs> so you're saying I'm just emulating our ancestors? Yes, and there's nothing wrong with that. Then why am I feeling so guilty? It's just five minutes. It's five minutes I'm not spending with him! I'm sorry. That was 
unbecoming of me. There's no one else here but us. I won't tell if you don't. It's... It's my son. Huh? My son. He has an illness. Something bad in his brain. The doctor explained it to me several times, but all he can understand is not treatable and terminal before the age of 15. Henry, you don't need to justify it to me. The first week, we had to soundproof his bedroom. It's the neighbors, you see. Turns out, there's only so much understanding and tolerance when the screams and cries happen every night. My wife, she never complains, but I can see it in her eyes. The exhaustion sapping her life away, one spark at a time. I told her to rest when I'm home, but how can she rest when her child is crying and screaming? She's giving all she can for my son. And yet here I am, selfishly taking a break. I feel like I'm a bad father. I suppose you're going to suggest that I reduce my working hours. I did consider that. Me and my wife discuss it at length, but... No, Henry. What can I suggest that you haven't thought of already? When you could spend the next hour telling me things, and I would still understand your life less than you. All I can do is offer a hand and tell you you're doing your best. And offer this place for you to take a break, even if it's only for five minutes. I... Thank you. <sighs> I think I'm ready to go home now. All right. Safe journey, Henry. What's that? A small thank you for yesterday. I see. We should eat this together. Hang on, let me brew some tea. Wow, the chocolate is so nice. Yeah, this bakery is my wife's favorite. I was buying some for her and I figured I might as well buy some for you as well. I'm glad you did. I shall be visiting this bakery myself. Why do they call it Hephaestus? Huh? Hephaestus is the god of forge, isn't he? Why not name the ship after the god of stars or something? Because it's not just a spaceship. It's a bridge builder. As it travels to that distant star, it will drop relays, signal repeaters for our transport system. Once it's completed, you can step onto a transport pad on Earth and be in that distant world. Wow. So the world will change once again. Such is the natural progression of civilization. Though, the Star Bridge won't be completed for at least 100 years. 100 years? What about the crew? They'll be spending most of those years in storage, using the same technology as the transport system. They'll only be rematerialized when they reach a point to assemble and deploy a relay. It will take 100 years, but most of the crew will only experience around 20 years. They could even transport back to Earth every time a relay is finished. Though, I think most of them will want to see it through to the end. 20 years is still a very long time. Yeah, to go on that mission is a sacrifice. To give humanity the stars. Or at least one of them. I would like to see that. Though I doubt I will be alive by then. Perhaps my son. Hopefully, my son. I'm sure he will be among the first people to step through the completed bridge. Thank you. I think one day, Earth will fade away like the big cities. What are you talking about? Big cities aren't going anywhere. Are you sure of that? When's the last time you visited one of the big cities? New York, Tokyo, Hong Kong, or even your own Kuala Lumpur? Hmm. I haven't had a reason to visit the big cities in a long while, I guess. Exactly. 
once they were the center of our civilization, but only because that was where people gathered. With the transport system, they have become obsolete. Why open a shop or an office in the city when opening it in the countryside would be cheaper and nicer while still retaining the same access? Why live in the city when everywhere is just 10 minutes away via the transport system? The cities are already fading away. So my son won't know the majesty of the big cities. That's a shame. Well, you can take him to Hong Kong or New York. They're not as populous as before, but there's still enough people there to make them feel like a city. Yeah, I think I will do that. Hey, Henry. Hey, Lonnie. You look more relaxed today. Well, I got good news. My son, he's been chosen for this new medical trial. It's the, um, the Institute of Utilizing Transport Technology for Medicine. They said they're gonna use transport technology to reconstruct his body. He's gonna be better than new. That's good news. Uh, hang on, I got just the thing for this occasion. For you and your wife. Oh, I can't take this. It's fine. I was leaving it for the next shift for something that didn't happen anyway. Oh, okay. Thank you. I wish I could stay, but I want to tell my son the news when he wakes up. I understand. Do you... regret it? Regret what? Marrying, having a kid. Have you ever regretted it? No. Ah. Okay. No. That's a lie. The truth is, I do think about it sometimes. I do think, in the crappy days, whether it would be better if I didn't marry her. But it's always a single voice among the thousands that shouted otherwise. There are crappy days, yes, but there are good days as well. When I just sat in the living room, watching my son laugh and play. When all three of us watched a movie late at night and him falling asleep on my arms. When my wife and I just walked around the neighborhood, enjoying the night breeze. Those are the happiest days of my life. Even if there's only one good day for every hundred crappy days. Even if I eventually lose him anyway. I would never regret marrying her. I would never regret having my son. I see. I'm sorry I asked. What's this about? Is someone proposing to you? No. Nothing like that. Today, it's supposed to be my last day. I got accepted to the Hephaestus crew program. What do you mean, supposed to be? I don't know. I've wanted to join the program ever since Hephaestus' construction started. It's why I took this job in the first place. My experience here is exactly what they need for building and deploying the relays, but going on that mission? It's going to take 20 years, perhaps more, to complete. By the time that it's done, it's definitely going to be too late to start a family. That's not true. You'll be what, 40? 50, actually. 50's not too bad. It's not too late at all. And like you said before, you could always go back before the 20 years. Perhaps. Or I could die before the journey is finished. We are venturing into the unknown, Henry. No matter what precautions we take, there will be casualties. If I want to start a family, I have to stay. Fair enough. But why is that a problem? Your dream is in the stars. Why do you care about having a family? Isn't that the point of life? You said it yourself that those times with your family are the happiest days of your life. If I go on that mission, I'll be missing that. I'll forever be in transit. I'll be failing in life. Lonnie, marrying my wife, having a child with her, it's the right choice for my life. If you go on that mission, I don't think you'll fail in life. You're just living a different one. A life dedicated to a dream and a life dedicated to someone, they're both just as worthy to fight for. You'll still be taking that next step forward. You think so? Absolutely. 
I've sent my resignation notice. What now, then? My supervisor should read it when he wakes up in five hours. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Henry. For your kind words. And for yours, too. Good luck up there. When I look at the stars, I'll remember you. <laughs>